Yo, what's up, boys and girls of the Mere Cult? Uh, welcome back. Happy New Year to everybody who is watching now in the new year of 2024. Uh, God bless you guys. Wish you all the best for the 2024 New Year's. And uh, yeah, um, just spent my New Year's last night. I'm recording this at 1 a.m. because I'm actually uh, quite interested. So I just came along a video from uh, Ask Vel. I normally never make videos like this, like where I react to a reaction especially, but uh, I think... He brought up a lot of good uh, points here that I would love to like um, kind of talk about with you guys to like discuss. And I've seen a lot of comments as well um, just recently, maybe after Askvel's video in my uh, sarcast video that I uploaded, you know, before the, the sarcast video that he's reacting to about the whole the whole thing, right? So the whole point was like. I was contradicting myself and I proved the Dogi statement was true, etc. So really just want to see first uh, what the video is all about. So I, I checked out, I watched like a couple of minutes. I think I watched like till the middle. Um, but yeah, I want to check out the whole video, but I think um, doing it with you guys will be a bit better because, um, you know, it's, you guys can, can join in, uh, etc. Just like uh, he's doing with the reaction. So yeah, uh, let's watch it right now. Let's cut it over here. So it's actually like, don't know when he starts the video, cause uh yeah, all right. So it's around here, all right. Uh, let's listen first. Dogi's statement on Indonesian teams. Now, there's actually two perspectives to this, right? Dogi mentioned that you know Indonesian teams are getting very very lazy. They don't want to put in the effort to actually scout for a lot of the new talent in the scene, and they would much rather just go for imports instead of their Indonesian players with new talent well i do have to agree with dogi's statement to a certain point right i completely understand especially now considering that there is there are so many imports playing in indonesia there is even going to be more imports later i can't reveal but there's there's going to be a lot more imports in indonesia i understand we aren't giving a chance to a lot of the newer players to a lot of the amateur players in the scene that's where i agree with dogi right I would love to see new Indonesian talent, younger Indonesian players start to get their experience to play in MPL and to see if they can actually compete. Because I think we do have the talent pool to actually compete with Philippines, right? Uh, it's just we maybe haven't found them. And so far, it has been more... Uh... That statement right there. <clears throat> Let me know what you all think. I think this is a good... Um, I, don't, I'm not, I don't keep a close eye on Indonesia, to be honest, so... Let me know how you all feel about that. Do you feel that Indonesia does have the talent pool to actually compete with the Philippines? Like, realistically, I know everybody's going to be on the side of their country, but do you think that it's some players over there where y'all like, yo, if they use this player right, if he was on the right team surrounded by the right people, he would be crazy. Like, is there any players like that where y'all see him and y'all like, okay, he might be scary if Indonesia knew what they was doing? Like, is there any players like that or is it like, no, nah, nothing really is too impressive over there that we've seen so far. Let me know. Anybody who's really keeping keeping an eye out, looking at the skill of players and stuff like that, let me know if you feel like there's that statement is true, where you feel like the talent is there. It's just being misused. It's not being, you know, they're not doing it the right way. Let me know. The better players have come from the Philippines. I think it's a fact right now. Three M series in a row. Uh, uh, those dominant compared to all the other regions when it comes to imports as well. And right now it's kind of an indisputable fact that uh, the Philippines is still number one region in the world and uh, I think that unfortunately is where I have to stop agreeing with Dogi the point where Indonesian teams aren't you know developing new talent that's it because when it comes to being lazy maybe some teams are but most teams I would say are not lazy most teams because you, you guys only see technically, uh, especially like the international viewers, the people watching this video, you only see the transfer updates that happen. You don't see the process of them actually trialing a lot of different members, a lot of open open like qualifier trials as well. Because for a lot of teams, I think for most of the teams, or if not all of the Indonesian teams, they actually have open trials uh, after the season, during the preseason or during the off season of when you know these teams don't make it to M5 MSC after uh, an MPL season, they will actually post on IG, post on socials where they're looking for members, and they'll have certain requirements. They'll have a, a form there as well, and thousands of people, mostly Indonesian for sure, or if not all Indonesian, are the ones who try out for that team. And the fact that they still get Filipino imports. I think it's not the teams being lazy. I think it's just the team saying, or it's the... I don't know what point he's about to make right now, but 
the fact that they're still just getting the import i feel like no matter how you spin that that's lazy it's lazy because you don't see a player with potential and be like mm, we might not be able to win a championship with this player this year but if we work with him throughout the year tr get him some training make him fit into this team and this composition by the next year he should be good enough to where I feel comfortable that this team can win. But instead, what they do is they're like, I don't see nobody good enough. Oh, let's just try this person from the Philippines. They look like they're dominant and they would fit right in. So you don't want to actually train and mold some good, some good player into what you need for your team. You don't want to mold an Indonesian into what you need for the team you would rather just import someone from the philippines that's lazy that is very very lazy and then it's, it's it hasn't been it, they're not winning they haven't really won yet so i mean obviously the Kyrie import clearly was a it, it's great it's been great for the um for indonesia but they haven't won you know so yeah i i think that it's, it's lazy i don't know how much how you can really put that and how you can twist that but i am interested in seeing what he has to say because yeah i want to see how he how he how he sees that i think it's all right okay um let's talk about this first i think you know because uh i think it's it's uh firstly kind of weird firstly all right let's talk about what i was saying in the video i was saying that you know i did agree with dogie's statement to a certain point and i think the, the points that he brought up saying that you know uh we're not developing new players etc i think i already mentioned that in the first part of the video as well that like i do agree with that i think we're not giving uh, our players newer players much of a chance in that perspective right as a perspective of someone who's looking at it that way um where you know the teams are lazy because they, they'd much rather get an import they'd much rather just go for the easy route which is getting an import the developed import instead of building your own talents etc that's where i have to agree with dogi i said in the video too but Again, also also said in, in, the, in the start of the video that I'm looking at it in, with two perspectives and that's why I'll have to disagree a bit. And I go on to explain that the Indonesian teams go on through everything. They went through an open qualifier. They went through, by the way, uh, what I said in the video was basically very, very, it was just the gist of it, right? But we have the most amount of academies. We have a lot of partnerships with schools. We have a lot of esports stuff, especially for MLBB community tournaments are everywhere around Indonesia. If you come to Indonesia, you'll see people playing in MLBB, you'll see the tournaments in MLBB, etc. And this is, a, this is a lot like uh, of stuff that the teams are putting, like a lot of effort that the teams are putting to look for Indonesian talent to be able to participate in MDL, participate in the community tournaments, and then ultimately play for MPL and play for the main team of uh, the MPL ID team, right? So that's why I'm saying the process isn't lazy. I don't think the teams are being lazy for finally deciding to go for an import because they've gone through all those steps first. They've tried their best to look for Indonesian talent. But unfortunately, I also said it earlier, it's just the fact right now that the Philippines have the best players in the world, right? I think you guys can agree on that too. So for the imports to finally be like the last decision, for them to have to go through that whole process and then now getting an import, implementing the import, by the way. Um, I don't know. For AskVel, maybe... Uh, for like i'm looking at it at a different perspective as well right for him i feel like he's still very very new to the community to the mlbb community because he even said that onic or the imports haven't won anything they've won more anything but again maybe he's referring to m series which is true they haven't won an m series yet but when it comes to achievements Kyrie, yeb the imports coming into mpl indonesia they've won quite a lot they're on a golden road they went to the grand finals and it wasn't like they got completely destroyed in the grand finals. Uh, it was 4-3. It was a very close game as well. It wasn't it wasn't a 4-0 like we've seen before. So the imports are clearly working. The imports are clearly efficient, right? Are, are clearly raising the level of competition for everyone. Like Onik, the rest of the players are improving so much, etc. So again, yeah, saying that they haven't won anything is kind of wild. Again, maybe he was talking about M-Series, so I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. But uh, back to the point of uh, how even implementing an import. He makes it sound like it's a very easy thing to do. You just get an import, he'll play for you, and he'll automatically do good. Unfortunately, that's not how it always works out, guys, right? For imports to be 
I mean, for, for, for teams to be taking imports, it's a very, very hard thing to do. To implement that player in the team, for the team to adapt to that player, for the player itself, like the, the guy himself to adapt to the team as well, it's very, very hard to do, guys. We've seen so many issues, for example, like, I mean, LAR, literally, the very, very glaring issues with communication, with language barrier. Those were the two main problems, apparently, for that team. Uh, but we won't be getting deep into that. Basically, what I'm trying to say is implementing an import player to the team, going through all those steps, and then finally deciding on an import player, and then doing all the steps of getting the import player to understand Indo, getting the players to understand English so that they can both communicate. There's a lot of processes that go through that. Now, that's why I said it wasn't lazy, because it's... It's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of dedication, guys. It's not just throw in money, they'll play good, boom, bang, bada, bing, it all works out in the end. Unless, you know, Kyrie and Yev already spoke Indonesian and are just in, like, you know, you know, you know what I'm trying to say here. Um, but yeah, it's not, a, it's not lazy, guys. I cannot say that it's lazy. Maybe in his perspective, when if, if imports are that easy, right? If, um, if it's just like put in, just like you're playing FIFA, you put in a player in your team and then you get a better rating, and I would say, yeah, it's lazy. I think that's the the kind of perspective that he's looking at uh, right now. But again, I'm looking at it based on the experiences that I've seen, the, the, the development that I've seen from every single one of these teams in Indonesia because I'm an Indonesian caster. I actually do know a lot of these things from scrims, etc. as well. I know how they perform at the start and I know how much better they become uh, in the end. So every team needs a process as well. And to be, and again, to just... Um, put I to use a, an example to prove my point even further. I'll actually uh, use M4. Onik did win MPL Indonesia season ten using Kyrie and Yeb. But if you want to say instant success uh, with with imports, I would say no, because um, for uh, Kyrie as a player, right? He played for Onik in M4 up against RQ in the lower brackets. They were destroyed 3-0, Onik, and then in season eleven they grew again together as a team uh so the process is still there even for a player as good as Kyrie, even for a coach as good as yeb they needed time to fully adapt to fully understand the team and then season 11 this whole year that's why they've been on a roll with every single tournament that they've been in right season 11 msc snapdragon season 12 four three in the grand finals so the only tournament that they lost was in the grand finals of uh, M, m series it's not the teams being lazy i think it's just the team saying or it's, the, it's just the real world saying, hey, unfortunately, we just don't have the talent right now. We don't we don't have the people. Like but my man, you started the video off. And, and I'm a fan, by the way, huge fan of Mirko. I love his content. But you started this video by saying we have the talent to compete with the Philippines. Now you're saying that the talent's not there. No, the ta you, you yourself just said the talent's there. Is it there or is it not there? And if you believe that the talent is there, that means if they're not finding the talent, if they're not molding the talent, they're being lazy. I don't know really how you can dispute this point. And you're actually going against your own words to try to dispute this point. You just gotta, okay, they're lazy, bro. Like, yeah, they're, they're lazy, you know? There's no way about it. If you're, if you're important over actually, you know, supporting your own, you're, you're being lazy. Unfortunately. Uh, again, all right, so... Um, sorry, maybe my, my, it may be confusing. I'm sorry for the way that I, I think uh, I misphrased it as well. But yeah, um, in this, uh, but let me just play it back again. Unfortunately, Unfortunately we, just we just don't have, have the talent, talent right now. Right? Now. right? Saying, so, hey, I think it's, it's just, just the team saying, or, or it's just the it's real the, world saying, saying, world saying that we don't have the talent do. right now. Because, again, when it comes to all those trials, etc., Although I do want to think that we know we have the talent pool to actually be able, I mean, if we, if we develop the talents, et cetera, to be able to compete with the Filipinos. Yeah, that's optimistic thinking. That's me. Uh, I think that way, right? But the real world and the teams, that's what they're trying to say. That's what I'm trying to say. I think the teams and the real world is trying to say it's not. Unfortunately, that's not how that's, that's not how it works. It's not that easy, right? Uh, and that's why they go for imports. Uh, that's why, in the end, through that whole process and whatever you know, and the things that I've said earlier, and yeah, basically everything. So I, I don't think I contradicted myself. I think I misphrased it. Uh, it's uh, yeah, but it's basically me trying to say that I think it's the real world and the teams 
who are saying that we don't have that talent, Mirko. We don't have that talent uh, um, pool, unfortunately, to be able to compete right now. But it doesn't mean that we don't have the talent pool to compete forever. That's why the imports, in my opinion, is such a good... Um, it's such a good maneuver uh, to get imports because we have very high level players coming in. The imports that we get are not garbage players, right? Obviously, uh, the teams who are looking to import, they're looking to import the best of the best, the best players that they can find. So with all these new players that are coming in, I think this is also something that cannot be, um, this is like a fact. You can't really dispute this, but the imports that have come into Indonesia have helped elevate the team. Belojski and um, maybe not all, but most, right? Belojski and Marky helped GeekFam go to the first runners up. Uh, we've seen multiple coaches as well, like Arcadia, help RQ uh, get uh, very, very far. And also, we have seen Kyrie and yeah, m the most easy like um, comparison, right? When when they when they joined the team, they raised that team. They kind of like raise the level of competition because again, everybody on that team stepped up big time. Everybody improved and they improved together. In turn, Kyrie also, I think, improved so much with the team. Yeah. Actually, you know, supporting your own, you're, you're being lazy. Unfortunately. Oh yeah, but okay, sorry. So, so uh, he says that if you're actually still importing and you're not supporting your own country, you're not going for your own countrymen, then it's lazy. Again, I've already said how like the whole import thing isn't lazy, how the process isn't lazy. But yeah, I mean, I can definitely see that um, perspective. Like if, if you, he, again, this is his opinion against mine, right? I mean, it's just really opinions around here. Um, but yeah, I really don't think it's, it's lazy. It's almost like, um, I guess for, for reference, I would actually look at football, right? The real football. Uh, maybe not the one that he knows. <laughs> Sorry, a little dig there because I'm talking about the, you know, soccer, football. That's that football. I hate the word. But, yeah, in football, let's, let's just take um, the English League, for example, which uh, a lot of people say are the most competitive league in the world right now. They have a lot of imports. It's not full English players. Actually, there might be more imports in total compared to English players. It's just some regulations there. But it's still the most competitive league. And does it mean that England's football is garbage. Does that mean that country has zero talent and will never be as good as the other countries? No, that's just how that's how it works, right? When a country is very, very dominant, when they have so many good, good players, like right now in MLBB, it's the Philippines. We're bound to get these, these players. And again, for in, it's not just happening in Indo. If it's just happening in Indo, then maybe we could basically be talking about okay, that's lazy, blah blah blah. But it's happening everywhere, right? I mean, in Cambodia as well, they don't have as much as big of a talent pool and the teams have definitely communicated that with getting imports right they've tried to raise that level and for and unfortunately even though indonesia started first um with mlbb they were the ones at the top at first they weren't able able to like keep being at the top right it was the philippines who conquered uh from m2 all the way to m5 when it comes to the m series so they've been at the top for the longest time and that's why now the filipinos are just better um at, at the game it's very very normal for sports, for esports, anything in the, the competitive realm, especially when it's team based, where teams will get these imports to help the other players, to help the league itself grow. Why did Messi go to America? Why did Ronaldo go to Saudi Arabia, aside from the money, of, of course, right? Uh, why did the teams actually get Messi? Why did the teams actually get Ronaldo, these big, big players? It's to help motivate the team, it's to help grow the team, to have a veteran like this, a good player. But does that mean, uh, these teams don't put in the work. These teams don't trust in their players, don't trust in their f own countrymen. No. You trust the, your own countrymen to work with imports as well and to learn from them, to soak everything up like a sponge. So that's where I feel like it's just a battle of perspectives. It's just a battle of opinions here. Uh, maybe, again, his perspective is different because uh, maybe he hasn't really seen a lot of imports before. Um, and I feel like, again, he's... I think he's pretty new to the MLBB community, right? Because when it comes to achievements as well, like he's, yeah, one we spoke about. We earlier. just don't have the talent right now. We don't, we don't have the people, like the people trialing aren't on the same level. People trialing the people aren't on the same level. Get imported. Mm. The optimal route, the, the, you know, the, the, in, in a fairy world. So <clears throat> there's multiple things you can do. What, what these teams could do is start up a boot camp. When you say all these people are coming to these open trials and stuff like that, start a boot camp where you're training these people. So the people who try out and they're the most impressive to you all, put them 
in, into a boot camp where they get to train, they get to hone their skills, they get to become better. Like they get to do certain things to so they can finally rise up to that level because obviously you're importing other pro players. So of course they're not gonna be at the same level. Random people trying out as opposed to importing pros and pros with a name, popular, strong, like come on now, obviously. They're being lazy. They want the person they want the person who's already a pro as opposed to someone who has potential, who's an amateur, who can become a pro and probably become even better than any pro that's on the scene right now. They don't want to pour into, they don't want to pour into someone who could become the next best when you see that, oh, this guy's already a pro and he's good enough. And that's good enough for our team. That's lazy. That is very lazy, man. Okay, so we already have that system, Vel. And this is how I know that maybe you're you're pretty new into the MLBB community. Again, no hate to ask, Vel. If you guys are watching this, please don't send any hate or anything. Because again, this is just both of us sharing opinions, right? But we already have that system. We already have academies. We already have community tournaments. We already have um, MDL as well. Below MDL, there's going to be trainees as well, guys. There's, there's a lot of things that the Indonesian teams are doing to try their best to, again, find their talents. That's why I'm saying that the teams aren't lazy. Because, sure, if the perspective is that naive, right? If it's like, oh... This is literally a game that just released yesterday and MPL Indonesia has just been around for one, two years and we just haven't been able to win and then we buy players and then the players automatically make the whole team better. Sure, that's very, very lazy. I agree. And I think that's the perspective that he's coming into this with. I don't think he has a lot of knowledge about the Indonesian scene or just the MLBB scene in general because, again, he doesn't know about... He didn't mention anything about MDL. He's talking about boot camping, academies, etc. We already have all that. That's a thing. In, in, a, in the real world... Sometimes even with all these facilities, it doesn't guarantee that you will find players as good as Kyrie, as good as Skyler, uh, an Indonesian player even. You know what I mean? So, yeah, uh, we already have that system. Imported. The optimal route, the, the, you know, the, the, in, in a fairy world land, we would have full Indonesian players, we would have... See, this statement right here is crazy. You said in a fairy world land, you'll mm -hmm. have four Indonesian players. The Philippines can have four Filipino players because the Philippines are just that dominant. They're doing it the right way. The players are strong. What you're saying is Indonesia is not good enough. So how can on one hand you say that Indonesia has what it takes to go up against the Philippines, but then on the other hand, you're saying that, that you have to import and the only way that you can compete with the Philippines is in a fairy is, is in a fairy world land that's kind of like are you, are you saying indonesia is no match for the philippines like because i'm i'm getting mixed messages right now i don't i feel like you're kind of going back and forth trying to is the talent in indonesia or is the talent not because if the talent is there if the talent is there that means that indonesia is lazy and that's why they are failing doggy statement so far for me doggy statement is 100 percent accurate that's what it is because you can't convince me that the talent is not there. I just don't believe they're doing enough to find the talent. They're not doing enough to make the talent to, to make the talent grow. That's that's a failure of the, the higher ups in that country. That's the failure of them. That's the failure of that country. The Philippines found a way to do it. Indonesia is the ones who's pretty shitty at doing it. So they just want to they want to take players from the Philippines because they don't have to do the work. The Philippines did the work to make these players who they are. The, these players trained in the Philippines and became who they are. And Indonesia just wants to buy the Philippines hard work. Come on now. That's lazy. Have, uh, the time. Okay. Again, I feel like it's a very naive um, viewpoint. Uh, this is, again, my opinion. It's very naive. Uh, the fact that, like, oh, I don't know where to start. <laughs> so... Uh, where do I start, actually? Let's, um, let's think about it again. So, I think it all starts with, like, the fairyland thing, right? Like, if in a, in a, in a fairyland, in an optimal world, everything that, again, because of, you know, the prior knowledge that I've just shared with you guys, that we already have academies, we already have MDL, we already have so many developmental, uh, developmental facilities for these young players to develop. And yes, again, I think we can actually get there. I think we have the talent pool. Uh, thinking that we have the talent pool and seeing the talent pool play, develop, is two different things, right? Because, yes, there is a talent pool, for sure. Can go head-to-head -head to Philipp against Philippines? Yeah, maybe, for sure. But, unfortunately, they're not there yet. We can't just put in players like that in the MPL. Again, that's why we have the whole development system, right? 
you have the whole development system. That's why we also have imports there to help the main team in uh, uh, get better with these scrims against the main team with that imported player as well when the team gets better this team will look for ways to get better as well and that's how the cycle goes on for training for development it's all about scrims internally it's all about improving internally with the whole team right uh i have to wait i have to listen again to what he said um that's what it is because in indonesia or is the talent not so yeah the talent is in indonesia but unfortunately we have to take the slower route we're not as good as the philippines right now and yes the philippines have built um much of a better reputation when it comes to growing their talents i think that's again an undisputable fact never try to dispute that fact anyways and yes philippines is right now the number one region in the world because they're able to do it all with full filipinos full everything and it's amazing for them but for countries who can't do that, we have to find a way. We can't just be like, oh, okay, we'll just trust um, this roster again. We'll just trust this roster 100 billion times. We'll trust the new players 100 million times. We have to find something different. Doing the same thing over and over and failing, that's what we've been doing. And that's why with the imports coming in, we're trying a new way. We're trying to find a solution to the problem. How do we increase the level of players drastically in a short period of time? And it has to come through these imports from a better region. Unfortunately, that's just how it is. It's the same thing with... Again, when it comes to football, that's what happens. When it comes to other esport titles, we can talk about CSGO, we can talk about League of Legends. There are import players everywhere around the world. There are Indonesian imports playing in China. Does that mean that China is garbage, no talent pool? No, they found very, very good players that they want to utilize in their team that can also help increase the competitive level in that country. And it's the same thing for Europe, right? There's a lot of countries in Europe there and they rotate all over in that region from these players and same thing in league china korea we got uh, um, uh koreans going over to america etc back and forth to eu and it's just that's how it is unfortunately when one country is super super strong when one country is so far ahead of the curve back to back m series world championships four times in a row you got to try to learn something from them. And that's the process. Uh, unfortunately, that's just how it is. That's the real world. That's why I said in a fairyland, in an optimal world, yeah, we would also, we would love to have full Indonesian players, right? Full, full Indonesian players, full Indo pride. Cambodia would love to be full Cambodian pride. But unfortunately, they have to get to that level first. And to, the fastest way to get to that level is, yes, through learning from the imports, through also bringing these imports in and then helping them grow together. Because again, when Kyrie and Yeb joined, I would say... Uh, Yeb actually brought a bigger impact to the team by teaching a lot of things, right? But Kyrie also grew with the team. He brought a lot of uh, like mechanical skill, etc., to the team, but he also grew, guys. When he joined in to Onik, he wasn't the best, like he was maybe mechanically the best, but he wasn't he wasn't in his prime yet, I would say, back in MPL Season 9 because Onik PH actually dipped for quite a bit, right? And then once he joined Onik ID, he was able to find that peak again with the four Indonesians. I like how... I don't know. I, I feel like he is discounting a lot of the efforts that are made also by the Indonesian players in the team. It's not all about the imports, guys. Again, when an import comes in, the whole team needs to adapt together, work together, and improve together. With an environment as healthy as Onik, you have to give props to the Indonesian management. You have to give props to the Indonesian org. You got to give props to the Indonesian players that they're all very accepting, and they're all very kind, and they're all very, they're very professional. I think the word here to, to be using is professional. And that's why, yeah, that's the whole rebuttal, I guess, against the statement of Askvel in this uh, position. That's what it is. Because you can't convince me that the talent is not there. I just don't believe they're doing Yeah, I, I can't convince you that the talent is not there because I believe that the talent is there. But again, the steps, they're steps. We can't just, you know... Talent, to, to make the talent grow. That's I feel like we're... Maybe where we can do even more, which is definitely the sites and the mission that, you know, all the teams are looking to do next year. I mean, by this year, 2024. That's, that's but yeah, it's not an, it's the, not an instant. Like, in as much country, as we want to process, as much as we want to give, like, the time for imports to be better in the team to adapt, it's the same thing for these younger players who are now stepping in. Failure of them. That's the failure of that country. The Philippines found a way to do it. Indonesia is the ones who's pretty shitty at doing it so they just want to they want to take players from the philippines because they don't have to do the work the philippines did the work to make these players who they are the, these players trained in the philippines and became who they are and indonesia just wants to buy the philippines hard work come on now that's lazy
have uh, the time to develop all the young talents that oh, yeah like the whole thing that i said earlier yeah we can possibly get but in the real world it's a business in the end for these teams mm -hmm. it's a business they're, they're not just here to mm -hmm. pay their players to get he really just explained why they're lazy he said yeah, it's, it's in the real world it's a business so in the real world it's better to just be yeah like no i think no that's not that's not a business isn't lazy i i don't know how to i don't know how to like fight against that man like saying that it's a business after saying everything earlier that i've said as well you know the whole process everything the money that's being spent and also the effort the hard work the dedication of all the management team of all the coaching team and everything guys it's a business in the end everything that's running right now it has to go on they have to find some sort of success and unfortunately they can't find those players yet they they don't um they haven't developed those talents yet but with these steps hopefully they'll be able to do it it's step by step Lazy. man like it's like again football and csgo and league and everything like in america football is garbage they're, they they can't like they're not in the level of europeans right so they import a lot of players and it's a business, unfortunately, so they have to import these players. In an optimal world, you know, everybody would be equal, right? In in a fairy world, everybody would be equal. But unfortunately, not all countries are equal. Not all players are equal, guys. It's it's very naive. <laughs> very, very naive, in my opinion. It's like, the takes... <laughs> at second place. That's so not it, man. Like, throwing money, etc. Even though, like, yeah, we are buying players. I, I, it's, I'm repeating the whole thing again. I already mentioned earlier why, like, how the import thing is still very, a very hard thing to do. It doesn't work Not with every team. International. And also, what Dog like um, Lar <laughs> said was that the Philippines has passion. Yeah, the Philippines love what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it's a passion yeah. for the Philippines. The hearts are in it. Yeah, but Indonesia is not the same. And basically, what? Okay, so, okay. So when it comes to passion, I will have to agree. Maybe when it comes to hunger, determination, uh, yeah, I do see that from the Philippines. Passion as well, sure. But to say that Indonesia has no passion and it's just all money is just ridiculous. Even for the business owners, the organization owners. Guys, esports is still in a very, very early stage. Everyone that's investing money into esports right now, it's a whole lot of passion. Esports is a very passion-heavy um, division. All the money that's being burnt a lot of teams actually are going at a very, very, like, are going red, just doing all this, you know? And if it, that's all the passion that's coming in. And again, with all the passion, sometimes passion isn't, you can't just say like, okay, Philippines are more passionate. That's why they're better. That's so naive, you know? It's like, what a, are we in an anime where it, it's just the power of friendship and, and passion? There is passion everywhere, guys. There is passion, even me, myself, from casting, from making content, everything. But I, again, like, it's just sometimes there are different levels. Some countries, some people, some players are better than others. Some regions are better. And that's how the world revolves around these issues. They find solutions. And right now, the solution is imports because they raise the level of competition. Again, I'm repeating a what lot because, is, what he's doing is because the points that I've made in this video right are the same. To be honest. It just, I think, again, um, because of his, uh, the lack of experience in the MLBB world, like not, not, ha not having prior knowledge of how the MDL works, how all this works, and how the ecosystem is in Indonesia, because it's quite, it's quite good for amateur and community players to not be able to do anything, right? Because, again, for teams, for organizations in esports, and it is a business, it's still a business, guys. It's still a business in the end. Like, even though they put in passion, they have to find some sort of money to keep it rolling, you know what I mean? So, yeah, victories. because again, sponsor engagement, social media presence, etc., mm -hmm, it mm -hmm. all amounts to what, them what he's being saying able to monetize their shit, which all comes from success. If you win tournaments, you get that name, you get that recognition, you get that fame, and mm -hmm. then sponsors start coming to you, and then you, you get more viewers, you get yep. more engagement, you can monetize that, etc. And if you there's different ways to go about getting sponsorships and engagements. Like, people would be surprised, like, all of these pro teams, especially in North America, these pro teams who get these sponsorship deals and stuff like that, like, not to brag or flex or anything, I've had sponsorship deals probably a lot higher than a lot of the people in North America, regardless of winning tournaments or anything like that, because it really just comes down to understanding the business and what a sponsor is actually looking for. Um, there's multiple ways around it, but the thing is, people want to take the lazy route. Oh, let's just play the game. Let's try to win a tournament. And if we win a tournament, that's going to come with all of these perks. 
it's like honestly that way seems a hell of a lot harder than how easy it actually is to get the success and or get the results it's insane it's insane people haven't caught on but i mean hey at the end of the day everyone's trying to do it the same way this is the thing in mobile legends the players are all playing the same heroes and the teams the organizations they're all doing the same things all going for the same players it's like no one thinks outside of the box and no one can think for themselves and if you are incapable of thinking you're going to think just like everyone else and that's going to be your biggest weakness you can't just be a robot and think like everyone else like the people who see the best results and, and get the biggest gains are the people who are outlier thinkers you can't be like everyone else the majority of other people they're all the same they're all the same in the, in the same situation if you want to be like the minority you have to think like the minority if you want to win you got to get the best player okay 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 so sponsorships is not that easy right maybe it is uh in north america i have no idea but even for mlbb my friend maybe for you as you know a channel a content creator with a very huge following 252,000 subscribers you're doing very very well uh, you can get sponsors, etc. But especially in these third world countries, by the way, uh, sponsors are not very easy to come. I think Filipinos can definitely agree with this one as well. AP Bren, I just uh, had the time to actually go from this video to check out the Grand Finals. As of this, you know, Grand Finals where they actually won af after winning MPLPH as well. They have, what, Realme as their sponsor, right? They have um, Realme. The, the, and then, like, two others, the, uh, others here. But before this, I remember very, very well that AP Bren were also struggling a lot financially, right? They were struggling a lot financially. They were struggling a lot to find sponsors, etc., because they were not making it to playoffs. They were not performing well. And yes, they did trust their talent, and in the end, it paid off. But see, not every team can survive that. Not every team wants to be in the position where AP Bren was. They had to like collab with AP as well. That's why it was Bren, and then it became AP. So when it comes to financial, it's very like financial. The financial standing of teams, it's very, very important. Ask Vel. Uh, when it comes to these teams actually like keep uh, t for them to keep going uh, the, the the very easy example as well was like of why you need to win why you need to find success why you need to be fame uh, to get that fame to have these sponsors and it's not as easy as you would think as well because he's saying that it's actually very easy to get sponsors etc no it's not I actually spoke to a lot of casters as well um, in PH because I was wondering the same thing I asked them many many times why doesn't why doesn't AP brand have more sponsors right they're doing so good right now and then they gave me a whole lot of reasons esports is still a very young idea um i would say especially mlbb in b both even philippines and indonesia like in, in indonesia it's a bit better it's much better for sponsors etc but even onic a team that has won msc before 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 Kyrie stepped in before season eight right before season eight and season seven and and season seven and even eight regular season and in, even in the playoffs they didn't have a lot of sponsors guys uh, and then after winning season eight, after winning MPLI, then they got a whole lot of sponsors. And then now they've kept those sponsors and they've added even more because they've consistently been winning. They've gained a name. They've gained fame. They've gained a lot of traction from the success that they've gotten. And success comes from wins. So, yes, I think that was, again, a very naive take. To, to, uh, I'm sorry, man, but like I think that's your perspective, which is great. I, again, do not want to bash you for everybody watching. Don't. Don't bash. Don't, it's again, we're welcoming a new member of the community, of the MLBB community. And unfortunately, that's just not how it works. Maybe it does work in NA. Maybe it does work for you. Um, and again, congrats for, for having that, for having that, you know, the sponsorship deals, et cetera. It's amazing. Uh, but that's just not how it is uh, in Indonesia. And from what I've heard from, you know, other talents in the Philippines, in Philippines, even more so. It's even harder to actually find sponsors. Yeah as possible and unfortunately we just don't have the best players right now in the world uh, i think that must just be a fact you know as much as i want indonesia new indonesian uh the new indonesian generation the younger players to compete it's a big reality check for everybody who's uh, against the idea of imports me personally the reason i love seeing imports is because mm -hmm. with imports joining in it raises the level of competition right because yep no it just takes jobs away from people from your country bro no way no way what do you mean no it takes okay oh, uh i'm sorry val i'm sorry my friend again don't bash him don't hate him 
Don't, don't, like, it's all about just opinions here, right? I'm just disagreeing with him. But no, no, no. No to your no, man. It does raise the competition. Onik were better, like, than they were before. The whole team got better when these imports joined in. And also, like, they, they both learned together. And again, the, the, what's it called? Impact of having these imports is already visible. You can't say no. You can't say no to that. Yes, you can say what you're saying next, which is, yes, you're taking jobs from other Indonesians. Okay, that's a fair point. But saying no doesn't raise the competition at all. It's like, brother man, that's not how it works, brother man. Yes, it does. It does raise the competition. I don't know how you can say no. What is very clear that Onyx is, you know, again, won so much. The whole BTR was able to make grand finals. Geek fam were able to to get to to grand final. It raises the competition. It makes it more exciting. When you would never expect Geek fam to get to the grand finals if it wasn't for these imports, these changes that they've made. That's just a fact. And so it does mean that it does raise the comp competition level. And before this, it was just Onyx and RQ. Now it's still just Onyx because, yeah, change is made. And then, uh, yes. So no, no to your no. I'm sorry, man. But yes, it does take away from Indonesian jobs. But that's a step. That's how we're, we're... Messi comes to America. He's taking a job of an American. Does that mean that... Fuck Messi. No. He's helping the team improve. He's helping everybody grow around him. That's, it. that's how... It's, yeah. Everything that I've explained earlier, rewind it again. Because I'm basically repeating it over and over again. But it's basically the same points over and over again uh, for me. That's what right? it does. Um, and you, it's you not giving... It's, it's, an, it's, it's, it's an excuse to not give people from your country a shot. It's not an excuse, man. Uh, pro the whole process, academy, the da, 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 community, blah, blah. We, yeah, we try. I'm sorry. It's just we, we're not... I mean... We're not. We're, we need to take step by step, man. We can't just yeah, that's, be Kyrie. That's we can't just be AP Brent. <laughs> I think it's an easy cop out, and it's easy to say, "Oh, it ups the level of competition." But no, because if it ups the level of competition, get your country's players together and go and compete in the Philippines and compete against these players instead of putting them on your teams. Now, obviously, this is great for the. Phil what? Wait. So for it to be competitive is if a full window lineup. This again, no, that's not how it works. Uh, I'm sorry, but no, uh, no, no. Philippines what? instead of these players together and go and compete in the Philippines and compete against these players instead of putting them on your teams. Now, I raising the level of competition. That. I don't know how they that connected. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm I'm confused. So to prove that the imports are not raising the level of competition or are, are raising the level of competition is for the Indonesian players without the import, without this the whole system, to go and do do the Philippines and face off against the Philippines. I'm sorry. Maybe I'm stupid, but I'm not mathing right now. It's two a.m. Maybe it's just two a.m. This is great for the Philippines because you're giving Filipino people more opportunities and more money and mm -hmm, things like mm -hmm. that. So it is great, great for the for Philippines them. and Filipinos. But for yeah. your own people, for your own country, it's a disservice for your own country. I wouldn't say that. Again, uh, the, the league is getting a lot more viewership, a lot more engagement because a lot of people have more interest. Like, there's more international interest. So it grows these teams so that they can actually provide better facilities again for their players. The money keeps on going, guys. Like, when, when, when these teams get money, when these teams get more successful, they don't just say, okay, let's put it in our pockets. No, that's why I'm saying the passion is, is here. We, we're, I mean, the teams are trying their best, 100%, to grow the talent. Again, the best way for them, for Indonesian teams, obviously, they would want Indonesian players like five Indonesian players and to win, right? But right now, we can't do that yet. We have to get a few of these better players, which is a fact right now. PH better. Yeah, I'm it's repeating really again. It's a disservice. That's, that's what's crazy. Because at this point, why put any Indonesian player on a team? Why not just import the entire team from the Philippines? And then it will actually be entertaining because you'll have literally the best players in the world going against each other the whole time. Just Indonesian teams just fully import a full Filipino roster. And I know that that's probably not even allowed. But you get what I'm saying? Like, if you're not going to take the time to mold all your players, like, you're taking the easy way out. The, the, if you want the best the best chance of actually winning, just import all Philippines. All Filipinos. Like that, that. 
yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm, I don't agree with that. That's really all you don't gotta agree do. With that. Again, I don't agree with that. Like, no. No. Imports have, pro have, have been proven to work multiple times in Malaysia and Cambodia as well with these new imports. And see you soon, let's say. It was full Cambodian roster, Burnix Flash, and then see you soon uh, came in with two uh, Filipinos. They were able to win and they were able to raise the competition. See you soon were amazing. Same goes for Malaysia, homeboys with Indonesian imports, uh, funnily enough. So, yeah, they had two players from Indonesia, an analyst from Indonesia as well, antagonist, uh, Warlord Barbosa, actually. So, three Indonesian players in homeboys uh, Barbosa, Rizal, and Warlord, and an Indonesian analyst as well. And yeah, homeboys won against the full Malaysian teams. Uh, does that mean that, you know, it should just be a full Indonesian team playing in NPL Malaysia? No. That's not how it works. Does it mean that, like, the full. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm sorry. That it's just not, it's not how it works. The imports that teams will be getting won't be imports from. won't be bad imports. They'll try their best to get the best players mm -hmm. they can. Exactly. Because why the fuck the would you pay yeah. that much money? Get someone from another country to play in your country. If it isn't to actually, you know, get the best player possible, right? Mm -hmm. Like Irad, we we wouldn't see Irad uh, here if he wasn't good. Man's fucking amazing, and with Man's him on the team, it raises the competition. Amazing. It raises the standard, raises the bar it does. in Indonesia, it does. so that everybody will follow. Everybody will have to catch up now. There's mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so what you're explaining is why the you're explaining why Indonesia is lazy. All right, I think that's where... Uh, don't know if he says anything else, but I think it's just going to be the same over and over again. Blah, 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 blah. No, that isn't lazy. Sometimes it takes steps. It, not everything can be like, oh, just yeah, just trust all your Indonesian players, man. Go bankrupt. Go go and risk bankruptcy on the team. And then uh, maybe you'll win a world championship with a full Indo lineup. Sometimes it takes... There are safer steps to take, right? As a team, if you want to stay sustainable, and these are the steps to take. It's happened many times before. If you follow any... Um, sports, football, like even basketball have, have have imports. I mean, if you follow sports, imports are everywhere for team-based sports, right? Esports as well. Imports are everywhere. This is not a new thing in esports. Uh, League of Legends, Counter Strike, th 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 all the games, all, all everything, man. Uh, that's how it works. So get a new player. It raises the level of competition. Everybody. Everybody is able, like, tries to catch up to them. They scrim internally with their second team, and their team gets better. Nile was Onik Prodigy. Onik Prodigy scrimmed a lot of times against Onik ID, which is the one with Kyrie, and Nile is now in MPL. You see, we're, we're slowly getting there. We can't get there instantly. So, yes, there is a process. It is not lazy. It is, yeah. That's, that's again, that's how I see it. It's not lazy because I know... And now you guys know about the ecosystem that, that is here and the thought process behind all these things. I don't know. If you guys still think it's lazy, again, you're entitled to your own opinion. You're entitled. I mean, again, Ask Vel as well is entitled to his own opinion. That's why for me, uh, please, uh, if you agree, etc., no hate. We're just spreading love. We're spreading knowledge. We're spreading ideas and opinions with each other. So, yeah, the, the, I think the whole rest of the video, I'll try to skip over it right now. Lazy. There's a new MPL be on the same. When you bring these superior players from Indonesian up your game and play on this level, or you're going to get destroyed. And um, yeah, so I think it's the same. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna be making the same points over and over and over and over and over again. I'm sorry for making this video super, super long because I wanted to see the other points he made because I only really watched it to like the half point mark before making this video. So I really had to like listen into what he said here and listening again to what he's saying okay, here to, and then I'm trying to the trying to talk about or trying to rebut some of the statements because I feel like in some of these statements, um, I do, I like, I like a lot of uh, his opinions, right? I mean, uh, again, taking some of the opinions that I said earlier, I, I respect those opinions, but a lot of them, I feel it's just not, uh, it's just like with the with minimal knowledge of how the esports ecosystem worlds in the world because again even Cambodia they're importing players even Malaysia they're importing players like I've said uh, earlier so that's just how it is but when it comes to competitive level sometimes you need to be able to make that um, move yeah uh, hopefully you guys enjoy this video um, you guys I, I love discussions as you probably know from this the whole discussion thing um, I think it's great. It keeps the community alive. I've seen so many of you guys also comment in the videos. Some of you guys are leaving hate. That's why I'm saying, please don't hate on Askvel. Please don't hate on me, possibly. Like, 
I would hope for you guys not to hate on me. But if you do want to hate on me, it's fine. I've gotten hate before. I don't really, I don't really care. But yeah, please don't hate on each other. Again, this is a sharing thing. This is an opinion thing. We're sharing opinions. We're sharing knowledge with everyone here. And please let me know what you think in the comment section because you might agree with me now with a new light shined up upon the whole ecosystem and thought process. Or you might still disagree, which is completely fine. It's uh, an open discussion that will keep MLBV alive even longer and we'll get engagement anyway. So yeah, like the video, comment down below your thoughts, uh, your discussions, etc. because I think it's a very, very good topic to be talking about right now uh, because we're seeing there will be more imports in Indo. Whether you like it, whether you hate it, there's going to be more imports. Yeah, peace out.